Hi, Dr. P here to talk at some length about games and the gambling instinct. Ambrose Bierce in the Devil's Dictionary defined lotteries as attacks on people who are bad at math. I have the same view about gambling for money. I don't do it because other things being equal, you're going to lose. It's a stupid thing to do. But lots of people love to gamble. And for some, unfortunately, it ruins their lives, which is the reason why we don't want it in games. Now, a lot of people use gaming to refer to what gamers do, whether it's video games or tabletop games. But in the world at large, to a great many people, gaming means gambling. The gaming industry is about gambling. In one state, a community college teaches people how to run lotteries and so forth. They call it gaming. Definition of gamble. Play games of chance for money. Bet. The second definition is take risky action in the hope of a desired result. The British could only gamble that something would turn up. Well, I'm interested in the pure version of gambling here. Of course, most games involve risk and less often calculation of odds. In war games especially, you can gamble that an attack die roll will go your way or a defense die roll will go your way, even though you know you're going against the odds. But there aren't many examples I know of that amount to outright gambling in tabletop games. That is where money's involved. It's much more common in video games. What's the difference between taking a risk in a game and gambling? Most forms of gambling have known probabilities that are against the player but the player plays anyway. It's a case of hope springs eternal in the human breast. Risk in games is usually a calculated risk, though the calculation may be simple and may even be incorrect. The player knows the odds are against him or her, but deems the risk worthwhile because of future gains elsewhere in the game. In the end, though, risking your money is the difference. Real gambling involves money. Taking risks isn't what the gaming people are working with. They're working with people who risk their money even though they know what the odds are or should. It's the money that makes it a serious endeavor. You can play poker without money, but it isn't the same game. But even if you play poker with money, it isn't quite gambling because there's skill involved in play. And in gambling, it's chance, not skill. At least the definition of pure gambling. So the ultimate form of gaming is something involving risk of your own money that is entirely subject to chance. Where there's skill, it's not quite gambling. Betting on sporting events, uh, at least when you use odds rather than over-under, isn't entirely gambling, though you're risking money. Games that are entirely chance but don't involve money aren't gambling either. It's the combination of pure chance and risking money. Now, where does this show up in games? Mostly in video games. Social network and mobile games. Some of them include gambling elements and it's a lot more common now than it used to be. For example, Vampire Wars 2 lets you open a chest, quote unquote, once a day to get a prize, a magic item. It seemed you never got the really good prize at first try, but you could spend real money to try again and again. I never did, so I never got a really good prize. Many such games let you get a freebie of some kind once a day, but you have to show up, as in log in, and then you can spend real money to try to get more. That's gambling. How about collectible card games or collectible games in general? They play on the gambling instinct a great deal, with technically variable reinforcement. The uncertainty when you buy a new booster pack is the gambling. Of course, there's also the uncertainty of drawing the next card from your deck, but then you're not risking money. I had substantially completed this screencast before the controversy about loot boxes in EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2. EA was so blatant about the pay-to-win aspects of microtransactions that players rebelled. A remark on Reddit by an EA person was downvoted more than 600,000 times, and it's probably even more now. 
far beyond the record of anything that had ever been unvoted, downvoted before. Unfortunately for EA, what works for their investors, which is microtransactions, on a full price game doesn't work for many players. I've run into it also listening to the Mighty Jingles uh, online channel where he was playing another game and he just didn't feel that it was working for him because he knew that other players were spending money to get chances to get good stuff that he was not spending money for and he couldn't compete with them. So he quit playing the game. Now some people think that government regulation will arise from this loot box debacle. It already happened in Japan some time ago. Japan banned what amounted to gambling within video games that had become so widespread. I kind of wonder what EA has done with their Battlefront 2 game if they've made it available in Japan because it's obviously gambling. That It fits the definition perfectly. I don't think there'll be any govern government regulation in the U.S. with the current administration. It's not going to happen, but something may happen in Europe. Now, some people think the fallout of the regulation will hit the collectible card game marketing scheme, which also fits the definition of gambling and, and of pay to win. Now, the problem for video game design is that micro microtransactions have become a major source of income for video game makers, even for the pay-to-play games like Battlefront 2. Free-to-play games live almost entirely on microtransactions. Gambling for pay-to-win is the easy way to do microtransactions. If this is banned, what happens? Well, game designers will have to find better ways, and some already have, of course, selling cosmetic stuff such as costumes for set prices, hats in Team Fortress, and so forth. What if this all gets to the CCGs? First, I've advised game designers for years to do living card games, not collectible card games. There's no uncertainty involved, and in most cases, it's not pay to win. If you're not familiar with the term, there are additional decks you can buy, and the game essentially is one deck against another, so you can buy a deck and use that one instead of the one you bought. Some of those games let you combine decks together but then you're starting to get to pay to win because the player who's bought more of the decks has more cards to work with to combine together. Tournament CCG play also often avoids the pay to win syndrome. There's still a chance element, but they're back to normal games, not gambling. At some point though, pay your money, see what you get may have to be abandoned. What about game design in general? Well, I like to design what I call thoughtware or brainware. Games that require a lot of thought. The whole gambling thing doesn't fit at all. Neither does big risk. In many of my games, if you play poorly, by the end you're sunk. You cannot win. I'm not going to provide some catch-up mechanism where you can get lucky and still win the game. But so many games nowadays are otherwise we still see big risk come into play. My recommendation to designers is avoid anything that smacks of gambling. You can be better than that. Thanks for listening.